there are four important JavaScript libraries that we want to look at that come kind of bundled or available or part of Gutenberg. The first one is WP Blocks, then we have WP Element, WP Components, and WP I18N or Internationalization. The important thing to mention about each of these is that these libraries are made available as global variables in JavaScript, meaning that they're attached to the main window object and we could access them directly inside of our own code without having to import them using npm or linking to a script tag. Now, looking at these individually in a little bit more depth, WP Blocks is going to contain components and functions for building blocks. So this includes components like the alignment toolbar or controls for a block, as well as functions for building the blocks themselves, like we'll see shortly when we start building our own custom blocks. WP Element is the WordPress abstraction layer on top of React and React DOM, and this is going to be used for creating elements inside of blocks. And we'll see that we kind of have two different ways of working with this, either by calling functions and passing in the necessary parameters, or by using something called JSX, which we will also explore in this course. It's important to mention here that although Gutenberg is using React and React DOM under the hood, we never have to use them directly or really understand completely how React or Gutenberg works under the hood in order to make use of this abstraction layer called WP Element, which is very simple and straightforward to get set up and working with. Next down the line, we have WP Components, and we probably won't be using this as frequently and what this has is common components that could be used for building interfaces within the editor or the editor itself. So most of the stuff we'll be using is probably already within WP Blocks, but I do want to mention that components exist because you may see it on occasion. And it's made available in the global window object. Finally, we have the internationalization library, WP I189. And this library allows for WordPress to translate strings used in our JavaScript. So just like we have these capabilities within PHP that hopefully you're already using where people can translate a plugin or a theme and have access to all of the text strings that will be used, well, the same is going to go for our JavaScript. So we'll look at how to use that as well. So once again, we have WP blocks, element components, and the internationalization library. Now before we wrap up here, I just want to show you what I mean by it is available as a global object when you have Gutenberg running. So here we have Gutenberg running in the WordPress admin area, and hopefully if you're doing a course on Gutenberg development, you're already comfortable getting set up with the plugin itself. And what I'm actually looking at here is the Gutenberg demo. So when we have Gutenberg loaded up like this, we have available to us in the global space, and I'm just going to show you this in the console here, I could type out WP blocks and see all of WP blocks. So like I said, this is the alignment toolbar, a number of other things that can be mixed in, as well as this function register block type, which we'll be using to set up our actual blocks. So you may see later on, we might do something like this and extract register block type and pull that out of WP blocks. So this is using object deconstruction here to pull out a specific part of it that we want. And we'll do this in this way just to make this easier to write, but we could just as simply do WP blocks dot register block type and call that directly. But this one above is going to be a little bit shorter. Now what we'll see is that we do not need to import. So sometimes when you're working in JavaScript, we might expect to see something like this. I'll just copy this line. And maybe it was from some kind of package called WP blocks or something like that. Um, maybe it would be named differently. But we are not doing this in this case. Remember, this is available in the global space. So we could just do WP blocks and we have access to it. The same is going to be true with WP element. So we could see here that if we open this up, this has the core stuff from React DOM and React itself, like we have the render function here, and the very important create element. So these are just like they are in React, but we're going to be using them through the WordPress interface. So again, we could call create element like this, or you'll see later, we could also pull it out and do something like uh, create element on its own is equal to wp.element and pull that out of there. So a couple different ways we'll access it, but again, the main point just to point out that all of these are in the 
are in the global space. So we have access to them. WP.com isn't anything. Components is correct. And then finally, the internationalization library. So if we wanted to call things like underline, underline, we can do that. And we'll have different ways of how we want to pull it in or rename it, et cetera. But they're all available just like this. So we could text to translate just like that. And we'll explore each of these libraries as we go in depth as we need them. But just knowing this, I would suggest that you open up the Gutenberg editor and play around accessing everything that we've looked at so far. And of course, WP itself is going to be a higher level object that has these other ones within it, as well as some other things there. So you could also explore this higher level WordPress JavaScript object. But that should wrap it up with what we want to look at in terms of important libraries that ship with the Gutenberg editor. And as we explore this course further, we will get into these in more depth.